good to see the Lord working in uh, someone's life. Amen? Uh, it's good to see the, the Lord working in, you know, young men's lives and young families' lives and to see the Lord raise up people and put them in the place where they can be used of God. Well, but there's no greater the joy than that, right? There is no greater joy than that. Um, open your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Judges here this morning. Uh, the book of Judges. And we're going to start in Judges chapter 1. Judges chapter 1. And the Bible says this. It says, Now after the death of Joshua, it came to pass, <clears throat> excuse me, that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered uh, the land into his hand. And Judah said unto Simeon, his brother, Come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I likewise will go with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with him. And Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand, and they slew of them in uh, Bezek 10,000 men. And they found Adonai Bezek in Bezek, and they fought against him, and they slew the Canaanites and the Perizzites. But Adonai Bezek fled, and they pursued after him, and caught him, and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. And Adonai Bezek said, Three score and ten kings having their thumbs and great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table, as I have done, so God hath requited of me. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. Now the children of Judah had fought against Jerusalem, and had taken it, and smitten it with the edge of the sword, and set the city on fire. And afterward, the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites that dwelt in the mountain, and in the south, and in the valley." And Judah went against the Canaanites that dwelt in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron before was Kirjath Arbra. Um, and they slew uh, uh, Shishai and Ahiman and Talmai. And from thence he went against the inhabitants of uh, Debir. And the name of Debir before was Kirjath Shepher. And Caleb said, He that smiteth Kirjath Shepher uh, and taketh it to him will I give Aksha. Aksha. How would you like a name like that? My daughter to wife. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it, and he gave him Aksha, his daughter, to wife. Let's all bow for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for um, the word of God, for, again, meeting with us on a Sunday morning. I do ask you to bless and minister to the hearts of all of your people that are here. Uh, Lord, each and every individual has a need. They have a desire. They're looking for answers in some area of their life, and I do pray that you would encourage them. Uh, if they need the balm of Gilead, that you would apply that. Father, if they need... Uh, uh, their heart just uh, cut a little bit, that you would do that as well. Uh, Lord, you know what they need better than I. I pray that you'd set me away uh, to the side and let the words of uh, the living God minister to your people. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we start off here in uh, the book of Judges. And most of you know uh, the children of Israel have obviously come out of the land of Egypt. Moses has died. Joshua has taken over. And now uh, Joshua, in the, in the passage, this is kind of a little bit of a recap in places in uh, the first part of the book of Judges, but um, Joshua winds up dying, and the children of Israel are now left without Joshua, their leader. And um, and they're in kind of a, a quandary. They're wondering, what do we do? Where do we go? What's going to happen from here? I mean, our leader is dead, we're on our own, and, and what is going to happen to us as a nation, right? I mean, we all get there, uh, sometimes circumstances in our lives change, sometimes things happen, and all of a sudden we find ourselves in a place in life where we're kind of lost, we're kind of in between what we had known for so many years, and there we sit and we just sometimes kind of flounder and wonder, what on earth is going to happen to me now? Amen? And that's what's happened to the children of Israel. And there's a couple of things that, uh, that can happen along the way. <clears throat> but the children, of Israel is le the, the children of Israel are left with a decision, and that is basically deciding their destiny. Deciding their destiny. And listen, when you get into that position in your life, 
you're going to be sitting there and you're going to wonder, which way do I go? Which road do I take? Which path do I take? Who's going to lead me now that so-and-so is gone? Right? Who's going to be my spiritual guide? Who's going to be my friend? Who's going to be my companion? How am I going to make it through this thing? And you're going to have to decide your own destiny. Right? You're going to have to make decisions along the way as to where you want to go, what you want to do, how you want to get there, and what path you're going to take uh, during that whole process. You're going to have to decide your destiny. You really are. And there's a couple of different things that, that you can do when you get down to deciding your destiny. Maybe you're sitting here this morning... And there's uh, one or two things that you will fall under. Either A, you're saved. You've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior by faith. And, and you're a born-again child of God. And you're just trying to figure out where do I go in my Christian life and what do I do next? And okay, Lord, what is the right path? And we talk about that an awful lot. Or B, you're sitting here this morning and you haven't trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you're lost and you're on your way to hell. And you need to decide what is going to be your destiny. Amen? I mean, one of those two cases, unless you're too young to really make a, a conscious decision for yourself, and then we, you're in a third category, which is just kind of innocent, right? But you're in one of those two cases, most of you here this morning. And I would just like to say that uh, what Israel found out in the book of Judges, and what we'll go over a little bit here this morning, is they found out a few good principles that they need to consider when they're deciding their destiny. All right? Now, everybody, when, they're, when you're deciding your destiny, when you decide what you want for your life, everybody in their, you know, in their right mind would say, I want to be successful. Right? I want, a, I want success. And listen, there is a way. There is a way to win. There is a way to win in life. Listen, the nation of Israel is sitting here. They're deciding their destiny. They're deciding, what am I going to do from this point in my life? And you know what they wanted? They wanted success. They wanted to be victorious. They wanted to conquer all their enemies, all their foes. They wanted to go into that land that God had promised them and take over and rise up and be a powerful, strong nation. And you think of your life that way. You want to get out and you want to conquer life right? You want to grow up, you want to raise yourself up, and you want to get on your own, and you want to conquer life, and you want to be successful. You want more money than you can spend, you want a nice car, you want a nice house, you want a nice marriage with a great wife, with a great kids that never uh, make any mistakes, right? <laughs> but, but you have a desire to have things done right. And there's a couple of things that you need to know when you're struggling for success, or when you're striving for success. Listen, you need to know, number one, you need to know when it's not working. You need to know when you're deciding your destiny and you have envisioned in your mind where you want to go in life and what you want to do, and you set all the wheels in motion to go down that path, that course, and you start traveling down that road in your life, listen, you've got to sit back and evaluate and look at where you're at occasionally, and you need to know what's working and what is not working. Amen? There was, um, uh, it's kind of funny the way this comes up, but uh, I talked to you a little bit about uh, Halsley's typhoon last, last week, right? Um, he, was a world, he was an admiral during World War II, and he was, uh, you know, protecting MacArthur's flank when MacArthur went back and, and invaded the Philippine Islands. And he was out, and his, his fleet got caught in a, a typhoon, a terrible typhoon. I mean, uh, 150 mile an hour winds, 90 foot waves. And there was a, uh, there was a chief on one of those destroyers uh, named De Riker. And the, the destroyer, the hull, was out <clears throat> sailing in the middle of that typhoon and she wound up, she wound up capsized and sinking. And De Riker was on that ship. And that ship went down. And he went down. And there's a whole lot of, you know, a whole lot of details that I, I can't get into here this morning. Those are for illustrations on another sermon. But he got sucked under when that ship went down. And he, he got sucked so far under that water, I mean, his ears were about ready to burst. He, he, thought he, was a, he thought he was a dead man. 
And all of a sudden, he shot back up to the surface. The currents and everything, just the way that it worked, shot him back up to the surface. And he wound up up on the surface, and he had managed to grab one of the life vests, and he had it on. And so here he is, this typhoon is raging, the water is just, it's, it's hitting him in the face, he said it felt like his sand blasting his skin right off of his face. The water is, is um, you know, the rain, and the water is, is hitting him so hard. So he's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, his ship has just sunk, and he's been shot to the surface, he's floating, and along the way comes this life raft, this, this thing that he can grab a hold of. What a great sight, right? When you're out in the middle of the ocean... Something that you can grab a hold of and get on and, and actually, you know, save yourself in? I mean, praise the Lord for little things that come along. And so he climbs aboard this little life raft, and he's out in the middle of this ocean. And remember, how, ta how tall are the waves? 90-foot waves. And what was happening to this life raft, it was so buoyant that every time those waves would come by, those waves would smash on the top of that life raft and just send them under the water. And the, then once that, that force had eased up, that life raft was so buoyant, it would shoot straight back up, and he would throw him off that life raft. <laughs> now, to make matters worse, to make matters worse, he had been in the water for a while before he found the life raft. To make matters worse, he wasn't the only man on the life raft. There was about 15 or 20 people clinging onto this life raft. So imagine this. You're in, on this life raft in the middle of the Pacific Ocean during a typhoon. It's dark. You can't see. That water is blasting in your face. You, you know, it's, it's like sandpaper. Every four or five, uh, you know, a, a couple of times a minute or every minute or two, you get the whole life raft with everybody on board gets sunk. And then they get shot up in the air. And they said that life raft went about 20 feet above the, the surface of the water. And all the men go flying everywhere. And then they scramble to get back on the life raft. And then it happens again. The same thing. And they, and they said when, when uh, this was happening, everyone is clawing and scratching. He said he was getting poked in the eyes. He was getting elbowed. He was getting beat to death by these men panicking in the middle of the Pacific Ocean trying to get back on this life raft. He said that happened about four times. And he realized, it dawned on him finally, this is not where I want to be. <laughs> You understand, when you're looking for success, sometimes you need to know what doesn't work, okay? And being on that life raft uh, for Deriary didn't work. So he let go of the life raft. Now, he's out in the middle of the ocean in a typhoon. You understand? He let go of that. And he started swimming off by himself. And he found that he could actually kind of feel the currents. In the, in the waves. Let me, get, let me uh, look at just a second here. <clears throat> and he found, he found that when he finally let go of that raft, listen, things went much better for him. He actually floated on the wave. He didn't have this sinking, rising, being clawed, being scratched, being elbowed, being kneed. Listen, everything started... Being a little bit better. If you're, if you're here this morning and you're going through life, I know you want success. Spiritually, physically, everything else. But you got to know sometimes when what you're doing is not working. And as difficult as it may be, you have to let go. Right? As difficult as it may be, when you realize what you're doing is not working, you have to let go. There's another thing that you need to do for success. You need to know whom to seek. You need to know whom to seek. Take a look at verse 1 back in the book of Judges. Now, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first? Listen, the children of Israel were, out, were there, and they were wandering around just like Deriah was in the, uh, in the Pacific Ocean. And <clears throat> listen, they, had, they wanted to know what direction to go. And they had to turn to the Lord to find out. Now we go back to our chief who's bobbing up and down the middle of the ocean. He's on this life raft. He had to let go, right? He had to get out of there. When he did, when he did, his, his life vest kept him up and he started feeling the currents in these waves. 
And he realized that by, by feeling these currents, 90-foot waves out in the middle of the Pacific during a typhoon, he actually got to where he could body surf these 90-foot waves. Instead of having the waves smash him and take him underwater, he, he learned just like you do on a beach. I don't know how many of you have been to the beach. I love body surfing. It's great, right? If you catch the waves just right, that wave will hold you up and it'll, it'll surf you along that wave and you can enjoy the ride. Now these waves are 90 feet tall and he learned how to do this. And he's out in the middle of this ocean and he's surfing these waves and uh, he looks over and he hears something. One of his other shipmates, first class Al Taylor, says, Woo-wee, chief, what a ride. <laughs> and Navy guys got guts. <laughs> All right? So he learns how to ride these 90-foot waves because he let go of what he was holding on to. I see, spiritually, listen, there's a lot of things in this life we want to cling to. I mean, we're out in the middle of the ocean, and the storm is raging, and there are things that, that, like those other sailors, they just wanted to clutch onto that life raft because that was all they had. But it was destroying them, right? It was killing them. The smart one let go. And he gets to body surf these 90-foot waves. Now, I'm not insinuating that that was a lot of fun. <laughs> but it kept him alive. You understand that? Now, he's had to body surf these waves for five hours before they calmed down. Five hours he was out there in 90-foot waves. Amazing. Listen, you want success in your life. Listen, you have to know when something's not working. You have to know when to let go. Right? You have to know whom to seek after. The children of Israel sought the Lord, and the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Right? And they asked, who shall we send up? Judah. Judah shall go up. And so Judah went up. See, I don't know what you're after in life this morning. I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know what kind of typhoon you may be in. I don't know how large the waves are that you're trying to body surf, or I don't know if you're back trying to hold on to that life raft, but I know this. I know that as you're going through that storm, you have to know when what you're doing is not working. And I can guarantee you this morning, if you're lost, just trying to make it through this life day in, day out, you're going to have this empty pit, this miserable area inside you and you should be able to tell what I'm doing is not working. And you're clinging on to that raft and you're holding on to it because you're hoping it'll save you. You're hoping it'll, it'll you know, get you through the storm. But sometimes, sometimes that's not what's going to get you through the storm. You put your faith in the wrong thing. You got to know when to let go, right? You got to know when to let go. And De Riker, he, he gave up. He said, this, this raft isn't working. He let go. And the Lord took care of him. Gave him body surfing for five hours. He had to have been absolutely beat. Woo-wee, chief, what a ride. <laughs> Listen, parents here, you want your kids to have success? Do you really? Listen, you need to show your kids some victory in your spiritual life, all right? I mean, they need to see. Take a look at Judges chapter two, look at verse seven. Chapter two, verse seven. It says, and the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua who had seen all the great works of the Lord, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, uh, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. Um, and then look at verse 10. And also all the generation uh, were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. 
listen, you want to you wanna succeed in life, listen, you need to know who to seek. And parents, you want your kids to succeed, listen, you need to show them some success. You need to be an example of success for them. You need to, I mean, you need to have discussions about the Lord in your home. You, when the Lord does something and blesses, don't be afraid to let your kids know, hey, it was the Lord. I mean, praise the Lord should be a, a common phrase. Thank the Lord. I'm grateful to the Lord. Look what the Lord's done. Man, I'm glad the Lord got us through that mess, right? Your kids need to see those successes in your life because in the, in the nation of Israel, in the book of Judges, they, that faded away. And the success that they had been so well acquainted with earlier in generations, or in generations before, that, that success faded away and the children didn't see it anymore. And it caused them to leave the Lord. And it caused them to fall back. Listen, you need to be an example, right? I mean, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 57 says, but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know what your kids need to see? Your kids need to see that you staying by the stuff and following the Lord year in, year out, through thick and thin, through the ups and the downs, whether you're on 90-foot waves or whether you're on a flat, calm sea, whether you just have a life vest or whether you're in the boat, that no matter what you did, the Lord got you through it. Success. We're talking success. Right? There was a, um, somebody gave us some good advice one time about, you know, parenting and things they've seen happen throughout Christianity time and time again, and that is the, the family will go through a rough time, the kids will go wayward, the parents will get discouraged, and then back away and wind up quitting and leaving church. And not stopping their walk with the, they stop their walk with the Lord. And they kind of go back to the world. And the, the, uh, the point that this lady made was, listen, when your children finally have some place that they need to go, and you've left, where are they going to go? <laughs> right? Where are they going to go? When they've made it through their ups and downs... And they finally get to the point where they decide, you know what, I need some stability in my life. I need to put my life on course. They normally, they're going to look to their parents. And if their parents have fallen away, you know what's going to happen? They're going to look somewhere else because we failed to give them that example. Right? Success. Right? Deciding your destiny. Hopefully you're deciding for some success. But I tell you what you're going to face along the way. You're going to face some setbacks. You're going to face some setbacks. Take a look at Judges chapter 1. Judges chapter 1. It seems like there's always trouble along the way. Amen? I mean, <clears throat> you can be here this morning and you can be after success. You might be here this morning and you might be facing a setback. Trouble is always going to arise. Look at chapter 1. Look down at verse uh, 19. So Judah goes out in the, earlier in the chapter and, and wins the battles. And uh, <clears throat> the next thing you know, listen, trouble, trouble is going to arise. And in verse 19, well, verse 18, Judah also took Gaza with the coast thereof, and Ascalon with the coast thereof, and Ekron with the coast thereof. And the Lord was with Judah... And he drave out the inhabitants of the mountains. And then something pops up. But could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had chariots of iron. Listen, you're, you're here this morning and you, you've desired to find success. I get it. But you know what you're going to wind up facing along the way? You're going to wind up facing some setbacks. The children of Israel came through that thing. They lost their, their leader. They had to decide, where, where are we going to go in life? They sought the Lord. They, they went out, and they started to fight the battles, and they started to win the battles. And inevitably, something is going to happen along the way. Inevitably, something is going to arise, and you're going to be faced with some setbacks. And the children of Israel, they went up, and they fought in the mountains, right? Right? But they 
They could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had chariots of iron. The Lord said he would be with them. The Lord was delivering them. And then they got in the middle of a trial that for whatever reason, listen, they gave up on it. The Lord wasn't going to let them lose that battle in the valley. Had they just kept fighting. But they got tired. They got weary. The battle became, in their mind, too much. Even though the Lord had directed them to do it, even though the Lord promised to take them through it, in their mind, the battle became a little too much, and they gave up too soon. All right? Like I said, you want your kids to have success? A lot of times, parents give up too soon. Okay? A lot of times, parents give up too soon. And it doesn't sound like much. Well, we'll let them have the valleys. We'll take the mountains. We got the high ground. But look a little closer. Look at what happens. Take a look at verse 21. And then the, the uh, roller coaster starts going. And the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem. Take a look at verse 27. Neither did Manasseh drive out the inhabitants of Beth Sheen and her towns, nor Tanak and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Dor and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Ablim and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Megiddo and her towns, but the Canaanites would dwell in the land. Take a look at verse 29. Neither did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites that dwelt in, in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwelt in Gezer among them. Look at verse 30. Neither did Zebulun drive out the inhabitants of Kitron. Right? Look at verse 31. Neither did Asher drive out the inhabitants of Echo, nor the inhabitants of Zidon, nor of uh, Ahilab. Look at verse 34. Neither did Neptali drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh. Listen, you see a pattern developing here? The Lord promised to deliver them. They were after success. They won success. They started down the path of success. And then the battle became a little too much for them. And they had a setback. And Judah had the setback when they went to fight the enemy in the valley. And they had a good excuse because they had chariots of iron. Oh no, God can't handle chariots of iron. Right? Listen, Christian. Christian, you're fighting the battle along in here and you're going to face some setbacks and they're gonna, there's going to be obstacles that are going to seem too big, too big to overcome. Listen, DeRikery had setbacks. He had to ride, ride those waves, I told you, for five hours. I mean, it's fun when you're on the beach body surfing, right? But after, you know, a half an hour, 45 minutes or an hour, you're ready to get out on normal waves. Five hours? And then the waves start to calm down and he sits in the water all night long and drifts, and he's terrified, and he's wondering what's going on. He had some setbacks. You get it? I mean, the Lord gave him some mighty victories. He got out of that ship, which was amazing to begin with. Right? He got off the raft, which was a smart move. He knew when to let go. He rode those waves, which had to have been really cool, kind of, <laughs> in a kind of strange sort of way. But the Lord took care of him through that, and then... He had to sit. Meanwhile, a lot of his shipmates had given up. And they were lost at sea. And they didn't make it because it the battle was too big. Or they didn't let go. Whatever the case. But he had to sit there overnight. And he drifted. And he drifted. And eventually he ran across a couple of other guys. And the three of them kind of tied themselves together. And they just, they just hung on in the middle of the sea for hours, waiting and watching. And the, the storm was still raging. It just wasn't 90-foot waves anymore, <laughs> okay? And every now and then, they'd get a little glimpse of what they thought might be a ship, and they would see one that would get kind of discouraging because they, wouldn't sh they weren't sure if they had been spotted or not. And his, uh, DeRikery's eyes, because of the salt water and the blasting, it, they were starting to swell up, and he could barely see at this point in time. And, 
and the, uh, you know, the weather was taking its toll on his body. And they saw a ship. And they weren't sure whether the ship had seen them, and they, he, he made a decision. He told the guys, there's three of them huddled together. He said, let's split up. We'll split up. That way there'll be three of us in the water. Maybe they'll see one of us. And whoever they find, you better tell them about the other two. <laughs> right? That's kind of important. So they split up. And he winds up... <clears throat> He winds up watching as these ships catch sight of one of the other sailors. And they rescue him. And then the ship, you know, he's trying to figure out what the ship is doing, and they rescue the second sailor. Things are looking good, right? Things are looking great. Life is going good. And here he is, I mean, he's been out in this water, you know, it, almost uh, 24 hours, I think, at this point. And the ship is now rescued, is in the process of rescuing two of his buddies. And he's still floating out in the water, and guess what shows up? Shark. <laughs> After all of that, he's that close to being rescued, and the shark shows up. It comes in, it bumps him in the back. You say, what's the Christian life? Oh, it's fun. <laughs> right? But it's better than hell. Amen. And he's out in the middle of water, and that, that shark comes up and bumps him in the back. And the ship starts coming, you know, and, and it takes it about 20 to 30 minutes before the ship starts coming in his direction. Meanwhile, the shark is circling him and bumping into him. And he just knows that any time I'm a goner. And he says, he says, you know, God, first you take my ship. Then you have me, have me swim around all night in the ocean, and now you're going to feed me to the sharks. That ain't right. The ship finally got over there and they had lookouts on, on board the ship and, you know, men with rifles and they wound up, you know, shooting and trying to hit the shark and they, they rescued him. And he made it out. He made it out. Listen, you're going to have setbacks. And the children of Israel, when they, when they went into that land, the Lord had all the battles won for them. That was his intent. They backed off from it. They quit fighting. They stopped too early. And then one by one, everybody else around them, Naphtali, right, Zebulun, all the other tribes started losing the battles or compromising on the battles, right? And they let those people stay in the land. And the Bible says, if you read through Judges, it says that the Lord used that to prove them to see whether the nation of Israel would obey or not. Listen, you want success, right? You got to fight for success. Those guys out there in that typhoon after those shipwrecks, listen, they had, they had to stay in their, their mind, stay focused, think about what they were doing, be smart. They had to try everything they could imagine to just stay alive in that, in that storm. That's what the Christian life is like sometimes. You just, right? Ah, oh, a life draft, great. No, this isn't so great. Let go. <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather be doing this, uh, you know, go this way. And just about the time you think you're going to be saved, you know, metaphorically, I'm not talking about actual salvation here, just about the time you think you're going to be saved from, from the, the ocean as you're a sailor, you know, uh, drifting on the sea, shark comes up and bumps you in the back. Listen, deciding your destiny. Where are you going to go in life? What are you going to do? You have to know, you know, what success is and where you're going. I mean, are you lost or are you saved? As you go down those paths, listen, you're going to have to get to the point where you can, you can determine when it's time to let go of what I've been clinging on to. 
You're going to have to know what works, what doesn't work. You're going to face some setbacks along the way that are going to be very discouraging. The children of Israel fought those battles and they quit fighting too soon and they let the outside heathen in among them. And it destroyed that nation. In your Christian walk, the more things that, you know, the Lord's got this plan for you, he says, okay, I want you to go this direction. The more, the more you veer off that course, the more things you allow in your life that he doesn't want in there, the more those things become a stumbling block later on, not only to you, but to your children and your children's children and your children's children's children. And that's what happened throughout the book of Judges. That nation is trying to decide their destiny. But in deciding their destiny, they, deciding their destiny, they quit the battle too quickly. They didn't throw away all the things God wanted them to throw away. God told them, go in, kick those people out of there, don't, don't leave any of them around. The next thing you know in the book of Judges, because they've let them stay, their sons are marrying their daughters. And they're taking their daughters to marry their sons. And you got this whole thing going on, and then the, the whole thing just starts going downhill. Spiritually, our Christian walk can be like that. I mean, we have, to, we have to look at our lives and say, what kind of an example am I going to be for my kids? Because we're leaving this to them, right? We're leaving this to them. What are they going to see? Are they going to see successes in my life? Is it going to be enough to encourage them so they see the hand of God working? Or am I not going to pay much attention to those things, it's going to be just very low on the radar and they're going to miss it because they'll not know it was the hand of God that got me through the storm. And you're going to face setbacks along the way when you're doing that and you're going to be tempted to quit. You're going to be tempted to give up. Some of those sailors out there in the middle of that ocean, they were holding on to those life rafts and some of them, they just, they lost the will to continue and they would just take their life jacket off, let go, and sink to the bottom of the ocean. It was just, it was too much for them. And sometimes the very raft that they were holding on to or the very group that they were with would get rescued. But they just quit too early. There's setbacks along the way. It's difficult, right? Listen. The cost of those setbacks is too high, brethren. The cost of those setbacks of letting the Jebusites and the Canaanites stay in the land, all those things that God wanted us to get rid of, we let in. The cost is too high because our kids pay the price. Our kids pay the price. Listen, if you're lost here this morning, the Lord Jesus Christ died on Calvary's cross to pay for your sins. And you're struggling back and forth between the world and you want success, but you don't know exactly what to hold on to, what to cling on to, or what to let go of. And you're in the middle of this trying to decide your destiny and where you're going in life. And you're going to face setbacks along the way, just like a Christian will. But listen, those setbacks for a Christian are costly because it affects other people. For you... It's going to affect your life. Those setbacks directly affect you. See, you are one of the, in our illustration here in the nation of Israel, you're one of the, the kids in the generation that didn't see the works of the Lord. Some of those Israelites, they got to see that firsthand. To them, it was very real. You talk about those old stories and they go, oh yeah, I remember when that happened. Oh yeah, my dad told me about that. Yeah, I remember hearing my grandpa talk about that time and time again. And as time went on, those stories kind of faded. And pretty soon, the kids went, oh, grandpa, you're getting senile, right? I don't want to hear that story. Grandpa, you tell that story every time we get together. And they'd go out and play while he told the story to somebody else. And you face setbacks because you don't see the hand of the Lord working like some of your forefathers did. But the cost, 
the cost is just too high. The cost is too high. Many people died in that, that, uh, that typhoon. A lot of those sailors died. The cost is too high. Deciding your destiny. I mean, you can shoot for success. That's what everyone wants. Truth of the matter is, you're probably going to have some setbacks along the way. But I tell you what the worst thing is. The worst thing is if you keep going in the wrong direction, you're going to wind up in slavery. Take a look at Judges chapter 2. Take a look down at verse 13. Now we just rode uh, 10 and uh, we just read, rode, right, I'm still riding the waves. We, still, we just read verse 10. And, all, and also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. And there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord, <clears throat> nor yet the works which he had done. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods uh, of the gods of the people that were around about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Balaam and Ashtaroth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord hath said, and as the Lord hath sworn unto them. And they were greatly distressed. They were greatly distressed. Deciding your destiny. Everyone wants success. You got to know a few things about success, right? You got to know when something's not working. You got to know when to let go, right? You got to know who to seek. You're going you're gonna to face setbacks along the way. If you're a Christian, just things in life, you're not going to lose your salvation. But there's things that can certainly knock you out of the race. If you're lost, those setbacks can cost you your soul. And those children of Israel that didn't know the work of the Lord and chose not to follow him, the Bible says the Lord's hand was against them. And he delivered them into the hand of their enemies. That is, he delivered his children into the hand of their enemies. Slavery. These children were, they were taken, and you read this in the book of Judges, we don't have time to go over all of it, but one foreign ruler after another would come in and enslave the nation of Israel. Why? Because way back there at the beginning, they didn't kick out everybody they should have kicked out. And the nation of Israel would fall into the same trap again and fall into slavery into a taskmaster that really didn't care about them at all, right? And the Lord, the Lord allowed that to happen. Listen, the Lord will step in, but if you're not careful, if you're not careful, the price for this failure is your soul. You know what Revelation 20 says? It says, and I saw a great white throne, and him that sat up on it was uh, from whose face the earth and heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books <clears throat> according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man, according to their works." And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And I think back about some of those sailors aboard those ships. And their vessel capsized. And they may have gotten free. And then they floated for hours and hours or days and days. And then the sharks came 
and they were terrified and their life was an utter disaster and they didn't make it and they perished in the sea and then to top it all off if they were lost as bad as life was to them they died and went to hell and then they burned for 50 100 I don't know how long it's gonna be till the Lord comes back this thing in Revelation takes place at least a thousand years from now so they burned in hell for a thousand years only to be brought up and have everything turned around and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire again forever and ever and ever. Is that the destiny you want? See, you get to decide your own destiny. You do. The nation of Israel went into that land and God gave them everything they needed to succeed and was there to help them and give them that land and gave them instructions on what to do and they started off good. But then the battles got to be just a little too much and they came up with excuses. They had chariots of iron. We can't win the valleys. And they gave in to the valleys. And the next thing you know, that starts this, this uh, domino effect and all the tribes of Israel start losing the battles and not completing the battles. And then the parents kind of falter and the children suffer. Next thing you know, the children don't even remember what went on. Next thing you know, the land and the, the inhabitants that were left in the land that weren't supposed to be there to begin with, now they're taking over, they're intermarrying, and now the Lord goes, man, this is just a mess. And he has to let an outside force come in and take them over, and they wind up enslaved. And that pattern happens over and over and over in the book of Judges. You'd think they would learn, but they don't. I mean, deciding your destiny. I know you want success. A few things you need to know about success. How are you going to get there, right? You need, to know, you need to know when what you're doing for success is not working. And you need to find something else. If you're lost here this morning, I would say that something else is salvation. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, that'll take you down a completely different path, right? If you're a Christian here and what you're doing in your Christian life is not working, listen, you need to find something else. Get closer to the Lord. Seek, I mean, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? Which inhabitants am I supposed to be kicking out and then kicking them out, right? So you can't, you can't keep going the same direction. You're in that life raft and those 90-foot waves, every time they come down, are just, just sinking that thing way under the water and then shooting it up out and... You're trying to scramble and get back on and everybody else is scratching and fighting. It's not going to work. You got to realize when to let go, right? Hey, Lord, I, this isn't working. I'm not doing this right. I need to change something. And, and the Lord, you know, will take care of you. He'll let you go body surfing for a while. <laughs> okay, five, hour, five hours is kind of excessive. <laughs> but when you let go... I mean, if you're, if you're saved and you let go, you follow the Lord. Listen, he'll take care of you. If you're lost, you let go of the world and you seek after the Lord for salvation. Listen, he'll protect you. He'll be that life vest for you, right? You're going to face some setbacks along the way. I mean, things are going to happen. All of a sudden, the shark's going to bump into the back of you. It's a terrifying thing. And you're going to be tempted to quit. You're going to be tempted to drop out, but you can't do that because the, the cost is too high. I mean, what we're doing here following the Lord is, is not, it's not, it's not a game. It's reality. I mean, our, you know, we may be saved. A lot of you, you know, we may be saved, but our kids and our kids' kids and our kids' kids' kids may not be yet. And what we do is going to affect them, right? 
And you're going to face some setbacks. And eventually, somebody somewhere along the way is going to fall prey to all those mistakes that have been made, and they're going to wind up in slavery. And the devil would love to have you captive in his hand, a slave to him, and not let you go. Right? He would love that. He would love to keep you in the middle of that typhoon, bouncing you around until you just give up hope and let go. That's what he's good at. That's what he's good at. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I can't imagine going through a shipwreck, being out in the ocean for days and days on end, no hope, no vessels in sight, no water, no food, dying of thirst, starving to death, barracudas and sharks all around you, and you're lost. <laughs> and when you finally give up and let go and just say, I've had it, and you sink down to the bottom, you die, and the next thing, you wind up in hell. What a tragedy. What a tragedy. So you get to choose your own destiny. The Lord has what he would like for you, but it's your choice. And yeah, I mean, sometimes the Lord will take you through a storm, but the Lord is good. I mean, that shark bumped this guy in the back, right? And for the next 20 to 30 minutes, he sat there with this thing swimming around him. He had to have been terrified. But the Lord got him out of that. And can you imagine? Out there in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, life vest, watching this thing circle you, bump into you every now and then. And you're just thinking to yourself, oh, ship of Zion, come get me. <laughs> I could almost understand one of those sailors, if he was saved, giving up, going, oh, heaven's a lot better than this. <laughs> At least I could understand that. But I can't imagine somebody lost, letting go. But the devil would love to have you enslaved and get you to the point where you just let go. Matthew 24 says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think, uh, think not, the Son of Man cometh. I'd just like to say this as we close this morning. Listen, you get to decide your destiny. But at some point in time, the Lord's coming back, and none of us know when that is, right? There's a lot of decisions you can make that can control your own destiny, and, and I use that word destiny kind of loosely, but listen, you, you, you're in charge of making decisions for your life. And I'd just like to say this morning, Christian, if you've been fighting the battles, but you've been stopping short, let's rethink what we're doing, right? A lot of people depend upon us to keep fighting. Our kids, our grandkids, our great grandkids. I don't have any yet, but that's gonna be great when they come along. A lot of people depend on us to keep fighting, okay? Christian, you have, you'll face some setbacks. And sometimes the sharks may bump you in the back. But the ship's on its way. The Lord's coming back to get us out of here, right? Amen. Amen. But if you're lost here this morning, you're clinging onto that life raft, and you're going to be tempted to let go. But there's nowhere for you to go. There's nowhere for you to go except into slavery. And I would just say, if you're, <clears throat> if you're here this morning, you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, 
Listen, I know the storm rages out there and it gets kind of crazy and there's all kinds of things that can happen. But you will never, ever regret trusting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. All right? It doesn't matter what kind of setbacks you face. It doesn't matter how often the sharks bump you in the back. You'll be terrified, I'll grant you. I would be. But you'll never regret. You'll never regret trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. What happened in the book of Judges? They shot for success. But they had some setbacks. Unfortunately, they failed in those setbacks, and that caused them to go into slavery. All right? Don't let that happen to you. Amen? Amen? Don't let that happen to you. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we, uh, we thank you for uh, these lessons that you've given us out of your book. Uh, Father, all of us want to see success in our lives. Sometimes we don't really have a good perspective of what that success is. Sometimes, Father, we cling to the world and we cling to things that really don't matter. Uh, Lord, help us to realize that the only real success is having our sins forgiven, having a home in heaven, so that no matter what we go through down here, Father, in eternity, we're going to be taken care of. And Lord, I do pray that you would be with the Christians here this morning uh, as they as they face some setbacks along life's road. Lord, it's inevitable that those are going to be faced. I pray that you'd give them courage and strength. Help them, Father, to uh, win the battles that you've designed for them to win and to conquer the enemies you've designed for them to conquer and not to, not to give up the fight too early. Uh, Father, for um, a lost person here this morning, I know they face setbacks in life. Lord, there's things that come up that are discouraging, that are heartbreaking, that are unsettling. Um, probably each day, every week. And Lord, I pray that you would use those things to help them realize it's time to let go of what they're holding on to. What they need is a Savior that cares about them and loves them. A Savior that will forgive their sins. And Father, I pray that if there's somebody here this morning that's in that condition, you would put it in their heart to decide their own destiny. Lord, it's their destiny to decide. But help them make the right decision. And Lord, again, I just pray that none of us here this morning would wind up in slavery, either to the devil in hell or in a defeated Christian life where the enemy is taken over and we're ineffective for our God. So I pray that you'd strengthen us and encourage us. And I just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.